Hey everyone, welcome back to the Practical Enthusiast Garage, and today we're gonna be working on my 2003 Toyota Tacoma 4x4 V6 that's right behind me. So overall, this truck is in really good shape, but since this is the TRD off-road version, it came with a locking rear differential. Ever since I bought this truck, it's never worked. In fact, when I push the diff lock button on the dashboard, the light in the instrument cluster just blinks, and the diff lock never actually engages. Let's take a look at it. So I'm going to show you that the diff lock is not fully engaging and to do that I've raised the rear end of the vehicle and also the front end of the truck because to engage the diff lock to begin with the truck has to be in four low and then you hit the diff lock button on the dashboard. So now that I've got all the wheels off the ground let's put this thing into four low and see what I'm talking about. Alright, so right now it's in two-wheel drive. Let's plop it into neutral here. You can see that we have the four-wheel drive indicator icon there that we'll plop it into four low, put it into drive. And then right down here is the diff lock button. So we'll push that. We'll kind of let it rotate just letting it rotate in drive. You see that diff lock is still flashing, so that indicates that it is not locking back there. So over here, I'll spin the wheel one direction, and you'll notice how the other wheel spins the other direction. That implies that the differential is still in an open position and not locked. So, that's how you know your diff lock doesn't work. So getting under the driver's side rear of the vehicle, we'll see the diff lock is mounted to the left side of the differential housing. It's this mechanism right here. So if your truck has this, that's what it does. It's the locking part of the differential. And it is electronically operated. So the first thing we gotta do is unbolt everything and try and remove it and see what we find out. Let's get to it. Okay, so I've gotten the lock actuator out of there, and as you can see, this thing was looking pretty crappy. Lots of corrosion going on in there. The top is obviously seen better days. Hopefully the exterior just looks worse than the interior. With this out of the way, it gives us a great opportunity to demonstrate how this locking mechanism actually works. Now, unfortunately, this is the best camera angle I can get. There's just so much stuff in the way that hopefully you can still see what I'm trying to get at here. So right now it's in the unlocked position. You can see I'm spinning driver's side tire forward and the passenger side tire is spinning the opposite direction. That means it's in the open position right now. But in this hole, which is where this actuator gear feeds into, is a toothed rack type system that leads to a shift fork that moves some sort of component in and out of the differential itself so that it locks and unlocks it. So to see this thing lock up, we've actually got to rotate the drive shaft so that the differential can spin and I can move the shift fork inward. So I've got the truck in neutral right now so I can spin the drive shaft. And what I'm going to do is use this kind of pry bar to move that rack system inward. So you can see that I can actually move it inward and as I rotate the drive shaft I can actually move it in into the locked position again sorry about the camera angle it's just it's about as good as I can get it okay so right now I've got it in the locked position and when I rotate the driver wheel it spins the passenger side wheel now in the same direction Let's see if I can back up and show that a little bit better here. So, again, 
Now that it's in the locked position, when I spin this, you'll notice how the passenger side now spins in the same direction. So there you go. That's what it's supposed to do when it locks up. So let's put this back into the unlocked position. So all we gotta do is just move this rack back over. And now it's all the way to the right side, or I guess the left side, if you're considering the left side of the vehicle. And now we spin the differential. You'll see that the wheels now rotate in opposite directions of one another, meaning the differential is now back open. So basically that means that the internal system of the differential is actually working just fine. It's just the actuator itself that's a problem. So let's get this over on the bench and see what we have. So here's the differential lock actuator mechanism. You can see that there's a electric motor here that feeds into a gearbox of some sort and has a pinion gear that sticks out. And this is the part that actually goes into the differential and moves that geared rack back and forth to lock and unlock the differential. So to start things off, I'm gonna take these three Phillips head screws out and pull this cover off and this should expose the motor's armature. We can take a look at generally the condition of that and determine if we need to go further into this thing. Now before I even get started I want to bring up the fact that I do have a rebuild kit for the actuator here and just consists of various o-rings and a few screws that more than likely are going to be seized and I'm going to have to just replace. I bought this off of Wits End. I'll put the link to this rebuild kit in the description of the video. Also here I have the grease that's recommended to lube everything inside of this actuator. This is actually made by Toyota. It's called Body Grease W. And again, this is what's recommended to lube everything inside of there. Unfortunately, this is really expensive stuff. I paid about $46 shipped to my house for this stuff. I mean, it's not very much. It's just a white grease but I wasn't able to find something that would be equivalent to this grease, so I just bit the bullet and bought it. I'll also put a link to this in the video description as well. So I guess let's just get started and take this thing apart. So I've got this whole thing taken apart and honestly, nothing looks bad. From the pictures I've seen online, I was expecting to see lots of rust and corrosion and maybe even water inside of this thing. And there's absolutely nothing that makes me believe it was binding or had any sort of problem like that. The only thing that could potentially have caused any sort of issue is the old grease. So you'll see this large gear right here, and this is what the motor actually turns. This ends up turning the shaft that drives the rack inside of the differential. So, I mean, the grease, yeah, it's old, but I, I don't think it's bad necessarily. But you can see right here, these semi-circle 
notches in the grease, that's actually where the contacts inside of here ride. So as this turns, it shuts off power and that signifies when the differential is fully locked. And then as it turns this way and it shuts off power, that signifies when the differential is back open. So it's a pretty simple system overall. About the only thing I can think was actually causing problem here was that somehow the contacts inside of this bell housing right here were no longer contacting the back plate of this gear. You can see the contacts within here and there's a lot of green grease build up on there and if we move that out of the way see that's kind of gross stuff these contacts certainly still look okay but maybe this grease was getting in the way I don't know so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean everything up here put some new grease on it I'm gonna repaint the external casings so that it at least looks a little bit nicer and then just put it all back together now I did take a lot of pictures as I was taking this off because this gear right here needs to be in proper orientation with this piece which has this what's called a clock spring in it and those two need to be in time with one another so when I took this apart it was in the sequence of the unlock position. So on a reassembly, I need to reassemble everything so that it maintains that unlocked position. I might have to do a little bit of calibration once I reassemble everything, but for right now, I'm just going to concentrate on cleaning this up and making sure there's nothing obvious keeping this mechanism from working. So let's get to cleaning this thing up. Okay, so I've got the diff lock back under here and plugged into the wiring harness. I don't have it screwed back into the differential. We literally just wanna to check to see if that motor now rotates when I click the diff lock button and disengage the diff lock button. Again, I have to cycle it a couple times, that way it recalibrates itself. We want it to be in the off position, basically, when we reinstall it, because that's the way the differential currently is set. So, let's give this a shot. Okay, so as you can see, it now rotates and it is currently in the off position. So this thing is ready to be reinstalled. All right, so the diff lock actuators reinstalled and everything looks good. Let's go turn on the ignition and see if it works. And then we'll hit the diff lock button down here. And the light is blinking. Let's go turn the wheel just a little bit. There you go. You can hear it lock into place. See that the light is solid now, indicating that the diff lock is engaged. Let's give this wheel a spin and see if it indeed is locked. Yep, sure enough, rear axle is now locked. You can tell both wheels are rotating the same direction at the same speed, so I'd say job done. I'm gonna go unlock it, make sure it can unlock. So let's see. You can hear the actuator moving again. And there it is, unlocked. 
All right, so that is the electronic locking differential completely rebuilt and now functional on my 2003 Toyota Tacoma. Now this isn't something I intend to use a lot, but I just like knowing everything on the truck works if I ever do need to use it. So hopefully you found this video a little bit helpful. I'll put links to the parts that I used in this video in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys again soon.